guys, HDTV here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be reviewing the Anchor Ultra Compact Bluetooth Keyboard. Now you guys have known that I've been using wired keyboards for the longest period of time, and before that I had a Jellycomb Bluetooth Keyboard, which I actually did a review on back in 2014, and that was my main keyboard at the time because it, you know, it worked with my desktop, um, my HP Pavilion Ultra Slim Compact Desktop, and then it also worked with my iMac which ran boot camp. But unfortunately, there were some problems with it, including the spacebar broke. It doesn't click completely all the time. The keyboard also isn't that durable. It's very slim. It resembles the Anchor Ultra Slim keyboard, which don't get that mixed up with the Ultra Compact. And it just went to sleep far too often. And it was a pain connection-wise. So, I moved on from it. So then I ended up moving up to wired keyboards, which I found the Apple numeric wired keyboard, which it feels good, but there's wires. And then I had that TTE Sports mechanical keyboard, which I love the feel of it, but it had wires. And I wish I would have found the low free keyboard back then, because I love the mechanical typewriter design, everything. It's amazing, but it's way out of my price range. It's like 70 to 120 bucks. So I decided, why not go with the Anchor, I said that really weird, the Anchor Ultra Compact Bluetooth Keyboard. There's a lot of good things about this, but then it has its downsides, but let's start with the good things. It has a really nice design that really resembles the Apple Magic Keyboard for like $80 less, so that's a pro. It has the Mac function keys and everything, um, and the Mac command option all to control everything. And so, it's mainly designed for Macs, but it also works Bluetooth with Android, iOS, iPads, everything you can type with your phones on them. I just use it with my computer, because, you know. It's also ultra slim, you can see here. And so it has, it's very light and quite slim, so it's easy to carry around and take it with you. In fact, I'm traveling this weekend, and so this will be going with me. The keys have a nice shape to them. They have kind of curved edges, so they're not all sharp and stuff like the Jelly Cone keyboard is. And one main thing that I really like about this keyboard is that it doesn't fall asleep like every five minutes. In fact, it takes 30 minutes for it to go asleep, and then you just have to tap it once and it comes back right away. I really like that about this keyboard. I've only had to connect it once to the Mac and it stayed connected that whole time, so that's another awesome thing about this keyboard. The feel is great, the way it types is great. It's all around a pretty good keyboard. But then there are some downsides to the keyboard as well. The keyboard isn't the most sensitive. In fact, sometimes I'll be typing and I'll hit keys or certain buttons and it doesn't like transfer it to the computer as much as I'd want it to. So I'd have to press a little bit harder than usual on some of the keys to get it exactly how I want it to press or even to have it communicate with the Mac. So if, if you know what I'm saying, I have to press a bit harder for certain keys for them to type. I don't know if this is the issue with all the keyboards or if it's just mine, but it's not that big of a deal, but it's a minor downside. Now this doesn't have adjustable feet on the bottom, but that's pretty common for smaller keyboards like this. I'll give it a bonus point for being durable and not creaking at all when I twist it. This poor jelly comb keyboard that I keep. Listen to that. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but that's annoying. This one. And I'm twisting it. Now let's go into my design portion of the video. So on the edges, it's glossy. Fingerprints don't generally show. And it looks kind of neat. Now it slims from the top down, so it kind of has a bent design, which that's also nice, and this closely resembles the Apple Magic Keyboard. I said Apple really weird too. On the right side we have two simple ports. First we have a mini USB 
to regular USB. That's for charging. So it comes with a included USB cable, which I think I lost. I'm not sure where it is. And that plugs into there, and then you can charge this. And this is supposed to have really good battery life as well. But I've had it for maybe a couple months now, and I haven't had to charge it yet. And then next to that's an on and off button. I had to power it off for this video because I recorded it once before this and I was fake typing on it. And I accidentally hit the space bar and turned off my recording audio on my computer. So, you know, it's one of those moments. <laughs> other than that, there's no other ports or buttons except for the top on the keyboard. It has a clean bottom. So nothing really on the bottom other than anchor and some little texts and some symbols and that stuff. And then it really has a neat, simple layout design. It doesn't have a giant logo on the space bar like some of the other ones used to have. And so that's a bonus point for Anchor. This looks very good. This is a very good looking keyboard, like I keep on saying, especially for the price for like $21. Now performance is pretty much like any other keyboard that you can get out there. It's like an Apple keyboard, just chiclet keys, standard performance. It's relatively quiet. So if you work in an office, or if you have this in the library or somewhere like that, or late night typing, this is a pretty good alternative um, for something cheaper. It types quiet, but it has some tactile feel back to it. And you can hear there that it has, it has a pretty standard sound to the keyboard, but it sounds pretty nice and it's relatively quiet. On the top you have three indicator buttons. One's a caps lock, Another one indicates that the keyboard is charging, and the third one flashes when Bluetooth is connected, or you're trying to connect to Bluetooth. Now setup is pretty simple as well, you just turn on the keyboard when you get it, connect it to the computer if it's not charged, but it usually comes charged, and then the Mac will automatically recognize it, or the Windows computer, or PC, or phone, or whatever, and you're set up. So that's pretty much all that there is for this keyboard. I, overall, I find it a very good keyboard for the price. It looks very good. No major branding stickers, which I really like. And it looks like the Magic Keyboard for a lot cheaper, and it basically works like it. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you go check out my Instagram, my Twitter, um, my website. All the links will be down below. I've been posting some photography and some cool shots in there. I'll have another short film up too. You guys seem to like the last one I did called Morning. It's kind of a funny one to do. It's actually interesting to film, you know, stand there with a camera facing the clock for like five minutes. That was great. But you guys seem to like it, so I'm going to try to get more stuff out like that. Some more short films, short movies, uh, a lot of cinematic stuff coming out here. It won't just all be tech. I'll do a lot of tech, but it'll be short films, short movies, maybe eventually drones or vlogs or who knows. But expect a lot of more videos coming this week, at least two or three. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.